in Kiev, the way is a city commonly called Kiev in the United States. We're also, though, watching another capital where government forces and protesters also clashed today. Tens of thousands of Venezuelans flooded the streets of Caracas, marking the seventh day of student-led protests in that capital city in a country that is oil-rich but also suffers a wealth of economic problems and a growing sense of division. A dynamic opposition leader, or, as the government sees him, an instigator of unlawful protest, Leopoldo Lopez stands at the center of the latest demonstrations, or he did, until today when he turned himself in to police. Lopez, a Harvard-educated activist from Venezuela's upper class, insists he isn't guilty of inciting violence, though he has urged students to rally in a series of protests that turned deadly last week. We are tired of crime, censorship, and people getting killed every day. The fury has spread rapidly through social media in a country where traditional outlets are heavily tilted towards the government. Venezuela, now led by Nicolas Maduro, the hand-picked successor to the late and enormously popular Hugo Chavez, has been plagued by allegations of corruption, growing crime and rising inflation. But Maduro has urged his own supporters into the streets and accused the United States of backing rebel groups, even announcing the expulsion of three U.S. diplomats this week, blaming them for recruiting students to the anti-government protests. We've seen many times that the Venezuelan government tries to distract from its own actions by blaming the U.S. or other members of the international community for events uh, inside Venezuela. This time, it appears the opposition won't be distracted, even with Lopez offline. Protesters continue to flood the and increase pressure on Maduro's government. There is a lot of division right now, but we have to be strong and not fall into chaos or step into the boxing ring and fight against each other. To help us understand what is behind the unrest in Venezuela, we turn now to George Chicarello Maher, who's professor of history and politics at Drexel University. He's also author of We Created Chavez, a people's history of the Venezuelan revolution. Appreciate your being with us, Professor. We did mention Mr. Lopez's education and his relative wealth uh, versus Mr. Maduro. Is this a matter of class difference? Is that what the division is here? It's not only about class difference, but that, that's certainly a major part of it. As you mentioned, Leopoldo Lopez is, comes, hails from the, the upper crust of the upper crust of Venezuelan society. He's actually descended from the first president of Venezuela. And so these are the people that are traditionally accustomed to running the country, to being in power, and they, and they don't like to be displaced. And part of what happened when Chavez was elected was that the traditional political class was displaced by a class, uh, by a new uh, class coming largely from below, from popular movements, from the urban poor especially, um, and these are the people who really have been given a new voice under this government. So what has manifest is very much a, a struggle between classes, although it's never been exactly that. And these protests, while not reducible to the middle and upper classes, certainly lean that way, whereas the supporters of the Venezuelan government, the millions of supporters who voted for Maduro and have continued to vote um, for the Chavista bloc, uh, tend to be largely from the poorest segments of society. So you, you note here uh, Maduro's strength. I mean, it, it is still his majority, right? I mean, the opposition is a smaller force still at this point. Yes, it is, and that's something that needs to be recognized because part of what happens with all the rhetoric that comes, especially through Twitter from the opposition, the idea that Venezuela is trying to get rid of Maduro, reality is that what that does is to, re, to, to repeat the historical silencing of the poor majority of the country, those who did vote for Maduro and those who would vote for Maduro again today and vote for the Chavistas. At the same time, um, these are, you know, this, this uh, segment of the population, the more radical Chavistas, uh, they're not necessarily always about only what's going on in the government. They're also building popular organizations. They're building organs of popular participation and communes. And so really, while, while this distraction is going on uh, in, the, in the capital, a lot a lot of people are really just still building, uh, building a new society. Right. We only have a few seconds left, but I do want to get to the relations with the U.S. and the indications from Mr. Maduro that the feeling is the United States is in some way behind this. Is that the case? And what about that relationship, particularly given Venezuela's potential as, a, as such an oil-rich nation? 
Well, the, I mean, it should be perfectly clear, if you look at the United States budget, there is, there is money in the millions of dollars earmarked for this Venezuelan opposition, despite the fact that it has been and behaved anti-democratically in the past. And so that's, that's certainly clear. At the same time, this opposition doesn't need the support of the U.S. pulling the strings to make terrible strategic decisions and tactical miscalculations like it's doing right now. It's perfectly capable of doing that on its own. Drexel University's George Chikarella Maher, thank you very much.